What's up, everybody? It's your favorite weak-minded fans, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the x Transbots Trailbreaker with the tune Paint. Uh, I got this because I'm not sure if Fans Toys was ever going to see the light of day, and I just need a representation of the character. I'm keeping the box in case something better comes along eventually, but I figured I'd throw the dice. We're going to do this review in five minutes or less because we've shown the transformation of this mold both ways, so we're not going to waste too much time, and with that, let's get through these accessories. He comes with three alternate faces, a screaming face, a stoic face with cheekbones and lips, and then a smiling face as well as your G1 toy face and it is all painted top to bottom. He comes with your diorama camping set with the log and the stump and then whatever this is supposed to be, a rock perhaps, and all of this is painted as well with the exception of the teapot and cups which are not painted and they peg in to small plastic pieces there and they're all cast in the white plastic. He comes with his radar dish, once again, fully painted, and plugs into the top of the truck. He comes with two wrist adapters, which this will also plug into, and this is just one of his kind of weapon effects, and let's see if I can't figure that out. There you go. With the hand collapsed inside the forearm, you can use your adapter with the piece connected like that. He also comes with two of these laser guns. These were painted silver in the initial release and they are in the white paint with this release as are the adapters and the weapon that went onto that. With the hand removed you can slide this on and then you can also use it to transform by opening this up, splitting this in two and collapsing it inside the forearm. And he comes with this translucent piece of plastic, which is the force field effect, like that. In terms of the vehicle mode, rolls like a champ. This does match kind of the tune colors. It has the turbo four wheel drive tampo, these paint accents on there, as well as the marker lights and kind of turn signals. The front chrome is a nice touch. They usually don't do that with tune stuff, but I like it as is the chrome on the, the wheels. I wish they would have painted the windows to match this but they didn't, so that's a bit of a bummer. So now this doesn't match at all, and this doesn't look too accurate, and it shows inside. There he is with Tiger Tracks. So the head is on a hinge swivel. You get up to there, down to there, and side to side. The neck hinge will also flip back a bit so you can get more extreme up if you want. Head is completely painted, including the metallic blue visor. Waist swivel. The shoulders have one hinge inside of the cab, and then they have the secondary hinge at the actual shoulder. Usually you're only gonna use the secondary hinge, which will get you 90 degrees degrees out and down by the side, as well as a swivel all the way around. Bicep swivel, single hinged elbow that gets you about 90 degrees. Wrist swivel, it has a tendency to come off because of the gimmick. You also have the thumb on a ball peg with a single hinge at the first knuckle, and then they fixed the fingers and they gave them individually, no, no, the, the index finger is on its own, and then the rest of the three are jointed on the same base pin knuckle, same for the other side. The hip skirts will get out of the way for your universals, which are tensioned out to the side for the full Van Dam, forward and back for the full Monty, especially if you get the butt flap out of the way. Thigh swivel built around the universal, a little limited, but it'll do. Double jointed knee with the first joint being ratcheted. No ankle tilt, you do get a slight toe tilt up and a slight toe tilt down, and then you get an ankle ankle rocker. The weaponry on his shoulders has a hinge at the base and then a secondary hinge at the top for both. Actually, this one has three and no swivel. And there he is from the back and the paint really does come through, especially the red, uh, the paint comes through. Size comparison wise, boom, ping, pow, wham, bam. Final thoughts wise, we'll talk about the negatives. Mainly, there's something weird about the proportions on this thing. For one, the upper body seems too long. However, that is somewhat in line with the character design. However, I do feel like it is a bit exaggerated here. Also, there's something about the shoulders that makes you want to desire more. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I also wish that the middle flank of the bot cleaned up a bit better and that there were ankle tilts up and down. Positives wise, the paint is great top to bottom. However, it does make me wish that the windshield was painted as well to kind of match because the translucent does provide an unsightly look into both modes. But the rest of the paint is really top shelf, extremely well executed and well done. It's also nice to note that they fixed the fingers. This is definitely a stand in for my collection if anything better comes along, but it is a stand in that now is appropriate and looks the part. So in that regard, I can give this thing a recommend. He'll do for now, where I feel like the prior version, the MMC version, and the Bad Cube versions, as time went on, weren't really up to par with the current aesthetic nor sophistication. It just goes to show that paint can go a long way. The materials feel good, the sculpt is decent, just some proportion issues mainly in the upper body, shoulders, and torso. The alt mode is beautiful, and it's got a little bit of hardware in there too. So it's a recommend for me, but it's a soft recommend. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.